Hey everybody, I'm back in Hong Kong and I have here on me the Vivo Nix Dual Display Edition. So this phone was launched in Shanghai four days ago. I was there at the launch and I made a hands-on video already. So I'm very happy that I have the review unit here right now. So it's actually pretty interesting. So several media, me, Android Authority, Gadget Match, and Gadget, and a couple other websites went to the launch. And Vivo told us, hey, sorry, we can't let you take that phone back home to test because that's a China ROM. It's not meant for international media. I thought, oh, great. So now I'm going to have to wait like a month before the international unit is sent to me. But Vivo actually got this phone to me in Hong Kong before I physically got back to Hong Kong. I just landed in Hong Kong yesterday, Saturday night. This phone was sent to my house on Friday. So kudos to Vivo for over delivering on their promise. They actually got me the international version of the phone before I actually got back to Hong Kong. So I'll go over the specs really quick. You have a 6.4 inch OLED panel on the front and a 5.5 inch screen on the back, also an OLED panel. Snapdragon 845 inside, 10 gigs of RAM, and you have a triple camera setup here with a 12 megapixel main camera, a two megapixel depth sensor, and you have a third lens that's a TOF camera. TOF stands for time of flight. It's basically a 3D scanner. So as I already covered in the hands-on, the main use of the second screen on the back is to allow you to take selfies, so you don't need a notch on the front. So now obviously, this is not the first phone to use this dual screen concept. Nubia released a phone just like three weeks ago. But Vivo has given the Nix a couple more features to take advantage of having two screens. So one of these I already covered in the hands-on, it's mirror mode. So all you do is tap this icon right here. And after that, it will turn on the second screen on the back. So the point of this is so the person getting the picture taken can see exactly how the picture is turning out. So, you know, someone's taking a picture of me, I can be like, wait, hold up, my hair is a little bit messy. Let me fix it first or get that towel in the background off the door. So another feature is that you can scribble on the front screen and that animation of you scribbling will display on the back screen. So you know this is pretty cute but it's a little bit gimmicky. The only people I see using this are couples basically like a boyfriend sending a message to their girlfriend sitting across from them or a girlfriend doing the same thing to the boyfriend. And the third mode is called V-Mood. Yeah these names are really funky but it basically allows you to display a picture or a message on the back anytime you draw a V on a screen that's locked. So you can pick a custom image, like you can use up any picture you want or just something like a message like this, like Merry Christmas or something. Just hit apply and I'll turn off the screen. So anytime I draw a V, it'll display a Merry Christmas message. So again, it's gimmicky. It's just, you know, to show your friends like something for fun. So to switch between the screens, you've seen me done already. It's a three finger swipe or you can just hit this physical button on the left side. So now this is actually a bug because if you go into settings and you go into dual screen, you can see switch display between dual screens, right? So you're supposed to hit both the left and right buttons at the same time to switch the screen. So in theory, you should not be able to switch the screen by just pressing one button. So this is a bug on Vivo's part. And I hope they fix this soon because one button to switch between the screen is actually a little bit too easy to activate. And throughout today, I've already accidentally switched the screen when I did not mean to do that. Like I'd be on the phone and I'm trying to lock the screen. The lock button is on the right side, but I'll press the left one by mistake and I'll be like, oh, it switched the screen by accident. So I'm hoping Vivo fixes that because if you need to use two fingers to switch the screen, then it becomes a lot harder to do by mistake. So there's an in-display fingerprint reader on the front and it's very fast. Very fast and very accurate. And then if you want to unlock the phone with your back, this TOF camera can scan your face like a 3D face scanning. So all you have to do is tap on this icon and it'll scan my face and get in there. So you can unlock the phone using both sides. So now one more interesting thing about the second screen, this aspect ratio is actually a little bit different as the aspect ratio on the main screen. So that means when you open third party apps on the second screen, it actually there's letterboxing on the right and left side. So it's kind of a little bit funky because when you are on the home screen, it fills up the entire display. Or when you open a first party Vivo app like the phone dialer, it covers up the entire display. But anytime you open a third party app like Google Chrome, you see there's letterboxing. Instagram, there's letterboxing. But the good news is Vivo actually makes you use of this little dead space by giving you a little swiping 
shortcut menu. So now from here, I can launch apps right away, like calculator or, you know, WhatsApp or WeChat. And this, it's completely customizable. So you can set the menu on the left or right side and you can add apps to you. So you can uh, quick dial someone, quick launch. So this allows you to launch any app you want on this menu that you swipe from the side. So you might have noticed that above the camera, it's a little slit. This is an earpiece. So that means on the Vivo Nix, you can make phone calls using the back screen or the front screen. I think that's pretty cool. And I've made a couple of test phone calls already. Um, everything came through loud and clear, no problems at all. So I've been using this phone all day. And while the phone, it's uh, pretty fast, you know, 10 gigs of RAM, so everything loads pretty quickly. I have noticed some bugs and most of the bugs are in the second screen. Sometimes when I open an app that requires a keyboard, the keyboard won't pop up. You see right now, like the keyboard should be popping up right now for me to type in Chrome, but it's not happening. So now I'll switch to the main screen. And usually when you switch back to the main screen, it will fix the issue. Nope, it's still not popping up. So yeah, you see the software is just a little bit buggy right now. It took like a couple of tries to get the keyboard to pop up. And now on top of that, like I mentioned, the fact that you can change the screen with one button has resulted in several like accidental switching of the screen when I'm not trying to. So it's a little bit annoying. So Vivo, if you're watching this, I'm hoping you fix the software fine tune in the base base because right now it's still a little bit wonky. But most of the time, the phone will be performing just fine with no issues. So in terms of software, the Vivo Nix runs Android 9, but because the Vivo's uh, software skin on top of it is so heavy that I actually don't see much of the new changes that Pi brings. So, so for example, when you try to power off the phone, you see the power menu pops up right here in the middle instead of on the sides, and then you also don't have Smart Rotate. So even though this runs Android 9 technically, I don't see any of Android 9's features on there. So now let's talk camera. In general, the camera is going to produce a really nice, really crisp image. Like there's not much to complain about, but I got to just get it out of the way. The camera on the Vivo Nix, it's not as good as the cameras on flagship phones such as the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, or the iPhone XS Max. So the biggest problem is that this camera is really prone to overexposure. So you see right here, the lights are completely blown out. And you know, this photo, it's not that challenging a situation. In fact, I took a lot of images side by side by side with the Vivo Nix against the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 and the iPhone XS Max and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. And the Vivo Nix's image, as you can see here, it's almost always overexposed. So now keep in mind, I'm taking all these photos in complete point and shoot situation. If I really want, I can tap on the display and drag down the exposure dial to fix the exposure issue. But I'm testing these phones as a dumb person, as someone who doesn't really know how to take photos. So I'm just doing point and shoot. And in flat out point and shoot situation, the Vivo Nix cannot handle lights as well as the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 or the iPhone or the Huawei devices. Like just check this out. This is completely blown out right here. This shot is not that challenging. But you know, I'm nitpicking here. Overall, the camera on the Vivo Nix is pretty strong. Like images always come out really sharp. Shutter speed is fast. And then look at the color accuracy. It's really punchy, very lively, and still relatively accurate. It's not like oversaturated like a Huawei device. So now in terms of video camera, unfortunately the Vivo Nix cannot shoot videos in 4K 60. It can only go up to 4K 30, that tops out at that. So I'm a little bit disappointed because even the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 can shoot 4K 60. But you know, overall the Vivo Nix can capture above average videos. So this clip here, it's 4K 30. I see colors are on point. There's a little bit of micro jit in this that a top tier smartphone like a LG V40 or an iPhone XS wouldn't produce. But even the Huawei Mate 20 Pro suffers from that. Uh, exposure, you see it's not that great here too. Now if you shoot 1080p30, stabilization improves a little bit. You still get a little bit of micro jitterness. So now let's look at the cameras as a selfie camera system. Um, Vivo obviously put a lot of attention into it because you have a lot of features. So AI Beauty, it's one of the most comprehensive beauty modes I've seen in the phone. You know, every phone nowadays, other than the iPhone, offers some type of beautification. You know, things such as like making your eyes larger or smaller. But Vivo offers so much more. You can change your forehead, you know, your nose. You can make your nose thinner or thicker. 
you can make your lips thicker or fuller if you want and you know as if that's not enough you can even do beautification on your body which is pretty hardcore so as you can see here you can um, make your shoulders wider or slimmer make your hips wider or slimmer and then for guys you can even make yourself taller or actually women might like this too because you can make your legs look longer like this is pretty full-on customization and um i personally won't use it because i think it's a little bit unnatural but a lot of people in china love these things and as mentioned in the hands-on the camera module is actually surrounded by this circular ring light uh, vivo calls it lunar ring so what it does is offers fill lighting like a lot of beauty bloggers they use a circular light to better illuminate the face so this is like the same idea i, I think it's okay I'm, i don't take selfies that much and the ring will also light up when you get phone calls and notifications so it's like another kind of gimmicky thing but it looks pretty cool so also as mentioned in my hands-on there's a 3d face scanner using the tof camera and it's very hardcore so let me do it right now actually so just like that it's done and it's gonna be a 3d model on my face it might be scary so brace yourselves this is pretty realistic you see it's so good it even picked up the fact that i have some acne scarring on my left side of my face i don't know what happened here there's a little black mark but uh yeah you see it even got my facial hair and the little individual strands of my hair look at how accurate this is so now here i can apply beautifying stuff so it's like i can make like a digital version of myself look better so i can make my eyes larger uh let's fix the nose so you see you make my make my nose longer the nose bridge and a mouth shape oh can i smooth my skin right here actually oh it doesn't let you smooth your skin because i want to get rid of these scars man yeah so um selfie camera is really fun so overall this camera system it's impressive it's not gonna take low light photos as good as a huawei device or even an iphone but it offers so much more features all right you know what we gotta do we gotta do a video speaker test so this phone has a speaker grill at the bottom so sounds can come off from the speaker grill right here and also an earpiece on the left but the sound coming out from the earpiece it's very faint it's pretty weak but there is sound coming out of the left though so we'll go to max volume So yeah, the speaker, it's uh, not that great. The sound and max volume, there's a little bit of distortion. Overall, it's just a little bit flat. Let's check out um, the video on the back screen. So yeah, the back screen looks nice too. But obviously, it's not as immersive. So sound is also coming off from this side too. So you actually get sound coming off from three directions. Back here, the front, and at the bottom. But you know, overall, it's still just an average speaker. So now I want to talk about my biggest problem with the phone. Battery life is just not that good. So um, because Vivo software doesn't let you track your screen on time, so I have to mark it down in Google Keep. So I unplugged the phone today at 12.35 p.m. at 100%. By 4.30, which is four hours later, the phone was already down to 54%. So in just four hours, the phone lost half of its charge now granted i was using the phone very heavily during those four hours but still on something like a huawei mate 20 pro after four hours you still be at like 82 percent or something and right now as you can see it's 8 13 so it's not even eight hours yet it's like seven hours and 45 minutes and the battery life's already down to 24 percent so at this rate this phone will give out and die at around probably 10 30 p.m so that means I saw it there at 12.30. If it dies at 10.30, that means it's only 10 hours of being unplugged from the charger. That's relatively poor. And I'm not even comparing it to the Huawei Mate 20 Pro now because that phone's battery is so epic, it's unfair. But even if you compare it to iPhone XS Max, it will still be good enough to last at least 12 hours outside. This phone can last you about 10 hours. Now again, I'm a very, very heavy user. So for a lot of other people, it might go longer. But I don't think it will last me all day so this is a phone that if i'm using out and about 
I'll need to bring a portable battery pack on me. Or I need to like remember, oh, when I'm at a coffee shop, let me plug this into the charger and top it up because it just cannot last me all day. Dollars, four hundred dollars cheaper than a top Huawei or Samsung or Apple phone. And for that, you get Snapdragon 845, 10 gigs of RAM and a headphone jack and a really stunning bezel as front and a second screen on the back that's really really gimmicky to be honest but it's still fun to have and this is a phone that would draw a lot of attention and catch a lot of eyes and it feels very comfortable in the hand so as soon as vivo fixes the software it's a little bit buggy right now once they fix that then this phone is a pretty good purchase provided you're okay with the battery life oh and a lot of my viewers were concerned that you can't get a case for this phone so this phone actually comes with a little bumper case out of the box. Yeah, it's not like the best looking case, but it will offer a little bit of protection. So that's it for now. This is my in-depth hands-on of the Vivo Nix Dual Display Edition. I have more videos coming up this week, so please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in the coverage. And also, I have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. So if you're interested in my work and you want to keep up to date, I would appreciate if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook too. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.